What's up and welcome to another edition of the Cover 2 Recap. I'm Edward Lewis, publisher of BruinSportsport.com. He's Joey Kaufman, the UCLA beat writer at the OC Register, and we're back. It's fall camp now. We're out here in San Bernardino, a, a little bit chilly San Bernardino. I can't believe it. It's about 75 degrees now, and that's easily the coolest it's been in the last three or four years here. So a pleasant first day of fall camp, and let's dive right into it. News and notes. Jim Moore first. The two big ones. Simon Goins, the offensive lineman, has a medical condition, but Jim declined to get into it. And Chris Clark has mono, and uh, we don't know when he's coming back. First, let's get into Goins. Uh, what do you make of that situation? What's going to go down there? Well, you kind of wonder, wonder about his future anytime a coach mentions that it's not a life-threatening issue. He brought it up out of the blue and said that we don't know how long he's going to be out. And he mentioned it's light, not life-threatening, which is weird to bring up kind of out of the blue. Nobody was even asking about that. But it seems to be a, a serious thing if he's mentioning that at all. Chris Clark uh, had mono, but he was out here today. He looks a little bit skinnier, so you could tell you know, he's been a little bit sick, I guess you could say. He looks a little thinner than the last time I saw him, probably in the winter. So, uh, But Jim Moore expects him to be back tomorrow. Some other notables, Craig Lee is not on the roster even, but but Jim said he's just got a little bit of academic issue and didn't seem too concerned about it. Cordell Broadus was not out here. He said it was a personal issue. Uh, Steven Manfro injured his shoulder early in practice, but again, doesn't look to be too serious. And Justin Combs, after the, you know, the infamous Diddy incident, was out here and practicing on the roster looks like he's still part of the team any of those stand out to you any of those notes uh the the chris clark thing is kind of interesting because he's number one tight end you expect because he's six six that he's going to have some role in this offense there's no clear cut guy really ahead of him and he's kind of a unique guy and a guy maybe you try and incorporate in so if it's only if he only misses a day or two not a big deal but if this lingers for a week or two he is a freshman you're trying to work him in that's could be a little concerning Getting into on the field play it was only jerseys and t-shirts and, and shorts and helmets today So there wasn't a whole lot of huge accent or huge things to evaluate But the quarterback play we got to get into that We're gonna get into that every single day until they name a starter here It was Josh Rosen versus Jerry Neuheisel. I thought Neuheisel took about 60% of the first team reps Rosen took about 40% Obviously, I always think Josh Rosen looks great and today he did again What did you think of the quarterback battle and what do you think of what Morris said about it after practice? Morris said at media day that Rosen added about five pounds and he's now 215 and I think he looked bigger noticeably bigger too kind of a bigger frame I think that was interesting to me and he, he still does a zip that comes off the ball when he throws it and his, his downfield throws have has great touch he had I think there was one series which was telling it was around the 40 yard line and Rosen has a nice kind of 40 yard pass down the sidelines that lands in the hands of Massington and then a couple plays later Neuheisel went with the same throw and it was a little underthrown and, and Van Dyke maybe could have caught it but it was still Probably not as nice as Rosen's deep ball, so you kind of see the difference in physical tools. But again, they didn't go a ton today. It was kind of a more limited workout. Jim Moore said it would be about five or six practices before he got into to naming a starter or anything. I mean, what did you make of that? About what I expected is, is what I make of it. I mean, I don't think they were going to make a decision immediately. I think we all kind of expected it would be a week before anything really happens. The interesting thing to me here is what's going to happen the second week. What are they going to do the second week? I under, they're going to rotate and try and work in three guys for one week, but will they really do that a second week? I mean, at that point you're getting kind of close to the end of fall camp, but then you only have two weeks when you get back. So it's... So I think next week is the thing I'm more interested in. Getting into top performers, we'll wrap up the Cover 2 recap today with top performers. I thought Deion Hollins uh, was, was arguably the best defensive player out there today. He had three or four would-be sacks. There was a play where he ran around Andre James so badly, it just looked like Andre James was a cone. So, I mean, that first step is no joke, and I think Andre James got acquainted to that real quickly out here at San Bernardino. Your top performer from the day? I like Massington. I think he on the outside, he had a couple, he had the really nice throw, or the nice catch from Rosen down the sidelines, and I think he's a guy to look out for if he can kind of establish himself on the perimeter opposite Peyton. And Jordan Peyton did mention him as well afterwards. So I think that's a role I think he needs to kind of show some promise. Maybe he'll keep doing that. That'll wrap up our coverage from day one out here in San Bernardino. You can follow my coverage on Twitter at Edward double underscore Lewis. You can follow Joey on Twitter at what is it now? Joey R. Kaufman. Is that what it is still? Joey R. Kaufman. <laughs> Joey R. Kaufman and the OCregister.com. Until the next time, thanks for tuning in to the Cover 2 Recap.